Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we're going to be looking at solving trusses using the method of joints. And this will be our fourth part in this particular series. So whenever anything asks you to solve a truss, all that means is that you are finding the member forces for each member of that truss. So in this one, we only have three members, AB, AC, and CB, that we have to solve for. We have to find the internal forces going on within those members. So <clears throat> first thing you want to do with trusses, if it is not given to you at the start of the problem, is that you want to determine the reactions. That's your very first step. So we have a pin here at A and a roller here at C. So go ahead and throw on your assumption arrows for these reactions. I'm going to assume CY is upward. And then I'm going to assume AY is going downward. And when you find your reactions, if you get a negative number, that just means you assume the wrong direction. So just flip the arrow, no big deal. <clears throat> so for this pin over here, A sub X is going to be zero. The horizontal reaction here, A sub X will be equal to zero because if we look at the truss overall, we only have a vertical load of 450 pounds here, and the roller is only providing a reaction in the vertical direction. There are no other horizontal forces or reactions being applied to this thing. So A sub X is essentially zero. So I'm not even going to include it here. Alrighty, so finding reactions first, I'm going to sum my moments about A equal to zero. So that would give me C sub Y here. So I would have 450 pounds, it will be negative because it is rotating clockwise about A, and I have counter set up as positive, times its perpendicular distance to A, which would be 24 plus 7.5, which is 31.5 inches. And then I have C sub Y assumed upward, so it will be rotating counterclockwise, so that will be positive C sub Y times 7.5 inches equal to zero. And thus my C sub Y pops out to be a positive 1890, Pounds, so I know my upward direction is correct since it cannot be positive. So this is 1890. Then what I can do is sum forces in the vertical direction to get my A sub Y. So summing forces in the vertical direction, taking up as positive, I would have minus 450 pounds. I would have minus my A Y. And then I have plus my 1890 for my C sub Y is equal to zero. Thus, A sub Y, when you solve for this, pops out to be a positive 1440 pounds. It came out positive, so that means my assumed arrow direction of down was the correct one, which this makes sense if this thing is cantilevered out here. It's going to try to rotate this entire system like this. So A sub Y has to be pointing downward to keep this truss in place so A doesn't lift up like that. So before you get doing or before you get into the member forces, always make sure your reactions make sense. So we have 1440 pounds in the downward direction here. Now, we are ready to start solving our truss member forces here. And at this point, you can just pick a node or a joint and start there. Now, typically the best points to start solving your trusses would be at the reaction points, just because you have a lot more information there, typically, that you can start with. Now, if you start of a joint and you can't really solve for anything, you just move on to a different joint. It doesn't mean that you're starting off incorrectly or you're doing the process all wrong. It just means that sometimes you just can't start at that particular joint and you have to move on to a different one. So you may just have to joint hop, no big deal. So with this one, let's start at joint A. And remember when you start at a joint, you are isolating that joint out. You are only concerned with the forces, the reactions, or the members that are connected to that joint. So I really don't care about anything else going on here. I don't care about BC. I don't care about the reaction at C sub Y. And I do not care about this force of 450 pounds when I am looking at joint A. All right. So what we're going to do with each joint is that we are going to sum forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. Now, this is a horizontal member, so it can only supply a horizontal force. A diagonal member can supply a vertical and a horizontal force. So if we were to sum forces in the vertical direction here, we would have AY going downward, 1440 pounds. Well, this is a horizontal force, so it doesn't cancel with the 1440. This right here would be a horizontal force for AC, doesn't cancel with the 1440. This is the only other vertical force that can be applied here at joint A, and it must cancel with the 1440 to have equilibrium held. 
So what does this have to be? Well, this vertical force has to be 1440 pounds in the upward direction. So it has to be going upward. Okay, so how does that help me here? Well, the, this diagonal AC can only have two possible options here of its arrows occurring. So it can have arrows going like this, or it can have arrows going like this. This would signify that it's in compression. This one would be tension. Remember, your arrows at the opposite end have to be going in the opposite direction for that member. So this one is up and to the left, opposite end at C, has to be opposite arrow, down and to the right. Well, we know that the 1440 has to be going in the upward direction at joint A. Well, this one is going in the downward direction of joint A. So can't be that one. So it has to be this one. It has to be going in that upward direction, compressing joint or compressing the member. So what that means is that since this is up and to the left, that means that my X force will be going to the left relative to A. So how do we find that horizontal member? Well, what we can use is we can use a ratio of the dimensions, which is the slope of our member AC, and we can utilize that with the same ratio of the X and Y forces. They have to be the same. So essentially what we have here is this ratio that I'm about to write has to be true. So the X force over the Y force of that member has to be equal to the X dimension over the Y dimension for that member. They have to be equal to each other because all forces inside a true truss are only axial forces, so they have to follow the slope of the member. So utilizing this ratio here for AC, what do we have? Well, we have our X force is what we're trying to find. So I'm just going to read that as XF. Our Y force for the member we just found at 1440 has to be equal to our X dimension for AC. Well, our X dimension is 7.5 inches. Over our vertical dimension for AC, well, our vertical dimension is 10 inches. So we can just rearrange and we can solve for our X force inside of member AC. And what we find here is that this X force has to be equal to 1,080 pounds. So that means that this component here in the X direction is 1,080 pounds. Alrighty, so now we found the X and Y forces for AC. Now what you could do if you wanted to find the true member force, you would just find the resultant here, the hypotenuse side of this little dimension triangle, and that would be your true value. Or what you can do is you can leave it like this. It's perfectly acceptable. So last thing to do would be complete the arrow here. So we have our arrow here at joint C or joint A. We also need the arrow down here at joint C. Well, it is compressing joint A, so it has to be compressing and pushing on joint C as well. So opposite end, opposite arrow direction, since this is going up into the left, this has to be going down into the right here at joint C. Now we have completed the member. And as I said, what you could do is that you could also find the hypotenuse here if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. All right, so two more members to go through. Well, let's stick with joint A, and we still have a horizontal member here connecting in the joint A that we have to solve for. Well, looking at joint A, we have taken care of the uh, Y directional forces. They all cancel with 1440 down, 1440 up. Well, now we have 1080 here acting to the left because this arrow is up and to the left. So that means the 1080 is acting to the left right here at joint A. Well, AB is the only other horizontal member that can provide any kind of horizontal force that will cancel with this 1080. Well, summing forces, you would have 1080 left. Well, you need 1080 acting to the right at joint A to cancel. So you can have equilibrium. Okay, well, now we found member AB's force. It's 1080, 1080. Well, this is going to the right here at joint A. It is pulling on joint A, so it needs to be pulling on joint B, and it needs to be arrowed in the opposite direction at the opposite end. So we are to the right, which means we are to the left here at the opposite end. So we have found all members connecting into joint A. Alrighty, now we can either go to joint B and get our last one, or we can go down here to joint C. Well, let's go over to joint B. It's a little bit easier, just less force going on there. So once again, we have a diagonal member, CB, and we're looking at joint B here. We're going to have a horizontal and vertical force here for this particular member. 
Well, looking at what's being applied at joint B, we have a vertical force of 450 pounds being pushed downward, and we have 1080 going to the left relative to joint B. Well, we would have 450 downward, so that means that I need 450 pounds going upward towards joint B to cancel with this 450. Well, the way that CB is oriented, I either have an option of having an arrow that is down and to the right or is up and to the left. Well, I know that the 450 relative to B has to be going upward, so it has to be the second one of up and to the right. So that means that my horizontal force has to be going to the right, which is a good thing because I have 1,080 pounds to the left here at B. So that means that I need 1,080 pounds to the right here at B. So now looking at joint B, I'm in equilibrium because I have 450 down in the vertical, 450 up in the vertical, they cancel. I have 1,080 to the left at B, 1,080 to the right at B. So now it's member BC has its values completed. I just have to finish it off the arrow down here. And this is up and to the right. So this has to be down and to the left, pushing on B, pushing on C. Now, you could leave your truss like this. Or, as I said earlier, you can fill in the resultant force here, or you can fill in actual tension and compression symbols here. Well, whenever an arrow is pulling on a joint, that member is in tension. Whenever it is pushing on a joint, it is in compression. So my two diagonals would be in compression since their arrows are pushing on their joints, and AB would be in tension since the arrows are pulling on the joints. But if you have the arrows, these values here are not necessary for T and C. Okay, so there are a few checks that you can do to make sure that you have the correct values. The first check would be looking at joint B and doing the dimension ratio versus the force ratio for C or for CB relative to joint B. So let's say we didn't know that 1080 right there, and let's set up our dimension ratio force ratio. So we would have our X force over our Y force, which is the 450 for member BC is equal to the x dimension of 24 inches divided by 10 inches. Now, if that was true, if this ratio is true, then this x4 should pop out to be 1080, and it does. So that's just another check to make sure that we have the correct values here. And the very last check, and this pretty much applies for all trusses when you're using the method of joints, is that you can look at the joint you did not use. Well, we used A, we used B, we have not used C for anything. But we have all the members solved, so there's really no point in looking at C and solving for anything. Well, whenever you don't have a joint that you use to solve for any members, you can use that last joint as a check because everything has to be in equilibrium about that joint. So this is just another check to make sure you have correct members. So looking at joint C for our check, if we were to sum forces in the vertical direction with stuff that is happening at joint C, we would have our 1890 going upwards. And then we are coming down here with a 1440, because this is down and to the right. And then we are also coming down with a 450 in the vertical direction because this arrow is also down and to the left. So this would be minus 1440, minus off 450, and does that equal to zero? Well, yes, it does. All right, that's a good sign. And then let's sum forces in the X direction here at joint C. Well, the only thing we have is the 1080 and 1080. This one is down and to the right. So that would be a right word. 1080, and if we take right as positive, it'd be plus. And then we also have this one, which is down and to the left, 1080. So that would be minus 1080. Does that equal to zero? Oh, yes, it does. So if those last joint, or if that last joint, the X and Y component forces or your summing forces in the X and Y do not equal to zero, something is wrong somewhere. Now, you also have to be careful of your rounding because sometimes it may just be a rounding difference. But if your values are not equal to zero and not very close to zero, Something's wrong somewhere. So that's always a good check to make sure that you have the correct member forces inside your trucks. Is just look at your last joint. And this would be your overall final answer. Or you could actually write out the member forces. Like you could say AB is equal to 1,080 pounds of tension. You could also display it that way. Multiple ways you can display your truss answers. But that's how you would solve for those truss values inside those members and solving the trust as a whole. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and hope you have a fantastic day.